Hi guys and welcome back to Just Drive. Welcome back. And sorry, we're again on the phone because we yeah. have issues with our camera. Yes. So, so uh, today we've got a full review coming. Yes. Of the uh, vo oh, <laughs> the Volkswagen Taramount or the Volkswagen Atlas as it's known in the US, Canada and uh, Mexico. So how about we do a full little walk around? What a lovely car. Yeah. It deserves a walk around. Oh, it does. It definitely. deserves a walk around. Okay. Yes. Let's, sure. let's, let's go. go. For it. What a car. Look at it. Daytime running lights, LED. So we would like to point out that this is the, um, how do we point this out? This is the, uh, oh, I left my wonderful cameraman. This is the SEL model. So this is the top of the range and has almost the full options. It comes with the 20 inch rims um, and this incredible body accent and it's aggressive styling. It's very masculine how sharp the lights are. So walking around the car, you can see just from looking at it, it is an incredibly gorgeous car. It's so big. <laughs> it's, it's a proper SUV. Compared it's, to you, it's still big. Compared to me, it's still big. And God, I'm massive. I'm like half the size of one of these buildings. So going around to the back, it's still a good looking car. In my opinion, it might not be as good looking as its bigger brother, the Touareg. Yeah. Even though this is the bigger car, the Touareg is uh, the more expensive model. It has big, big exhaust, sorry. Yes, I know, it's something that bothers both me and you. Yeah, yeah. But it is still a very, very beautiful car. Going around to the side, it's continuing this, this aggressive style with sharp lines over the shoulders. It's going over to the front. It is, in my opinion, a very look, good looking car. What do you think, Ahmed? Oh, man. I, I don't know what to say because it looks good. It is a very good looking car. There's nothing more I can see. Starting the price of these cars are uh, how much, Ahmed? 13? Yes, 13, 14,000 dinar. I don't know why I didn't just say it. So this is, you know, it's a fairly affordable, decent sized car. So 13, 14,000 dinar is about 25 and to... And you an optional sidestep. Yes, it, this, the SEL model comes with the optional sidestep. Yes. So it, come, um, it comes to about $30,000, dollars 25 dollars to $30,000 or pounds to dollars. So, should we head on in? Give them the full review or? Oh, right, okay. What are you doing, Ahmed? You're wasting my time and this viewer's time. It's got a panoramic sunroof, man. Yeah, it's got a full, so it's got a full panoramic sunroof, and Ahmed's just gonna go and stand up in it because it'll make him feel good. There we go, Ahmed. Panoramic sunroof and yes. a sunroof. But I have to say, yeah. better than that, look at that view. <laughs> perfect car, perfect landscape. Wonderful. Let's go, let's go, let's go, man. Cool. Here we are. Yes. Uh, um, with a new car. 
that's okay. So, Use here we it. are <laughs> in the new car. <laughs> uh, in the Terramont slash Atlas. Yes, the Volkswagen uh, Terramont. Yes, the seven seat. So it's the biggest in the range. Now, as we've previously mentioned, this is the SEL model, which is the top of the range, non-inclusive non of the R-Line. And the R-Line is just a couple of sportier bits here. Exactly. So this is a 3.6 litre engine uh, and produces 280 PS or horsepower, 276. Like normal people. It's minutely different. <laughs> so what do you think, Ahmed? Initial thoughts of, In, of the interior. The initial, oh, are you starting with the interior first? Yeah, we'll start with the interior first. The interior is, well, I would say it's very good, you know, put together. You it's German. It's, it's exactly. the only way to put it. It's it's a German interior. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it is incredibly well put together. The materials, they don't get me wrong, they aren't the most expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not leather. It's not like, you know, what do you call it? Authentic leather. It's not the... Yes, it's not, you know, it's not like the wood taken from a Bentley. Exactly. But it does look and feel nice. very nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's put together well. It's, you know, feels nice. It looks nice. But it isn't the genuine article. Exactly, and, and, and at this price range, you wouldn't be expecting to have genuine leather and genuine wood. So for them to, let's say, go the extra step of having this, you know, let's say the fake leather and the, you know, the fake wood, it gives it more of an aesthetic look that looks nice, that makes you feel that, you know, and you are in a luxurious car. Yes, because at the end of the day, this is actually a very luxurious car. Exactly. And it's a very large car capable of handling a full family. It's yes. a seven-seater. And it's a seven-seater with comfort. With comfort, very much comfort is that. Yes. And a, a, as a matter of fact, I was able to sit behind you for the first time in any car that we have. <laughs> And you were sitting comfortably at the front, and I was sitting comfortably at the back. I have to say that um, this seating position that I'm currently in, I've got loads of leg room, I've got loads of headroom. Um, I'm not struggling for room. I can, f I, for the first time, I tried to reach something on the dashboard, and I couldn't actually reach it without getting it off my seat, <laughs> which is really strange for these monkey arms. So, uh, apart from that, you have. You have a lot of things uh, over here in the car. I mean, this car is fully specced. Okay. So the SEL S yeah. is the top of the range. It comes with everything, essentially. As a standard? As a standard. Okay. So that's everything from your Apple CarPlay. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, on the Terramont, even the lowest model, mm -hmm. which is still quite a lot, still comes with the Apple CarPlay, which is really nice to see, considering that some brands like to charge us thousands of dollars, pounds, and even dinar. Mm. So... Inside the Terramont itself, uh, you can see you have your what do you call it, fake leather dashboard. You have the fake what do you call it, the fake wood or the wood trim. But just like we said, I'm not nice. saying fake, fake, fake. But you don't feel it unless no, you really know. No, you don't know. feel it. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to don't. know the car. Okay. So don't get me wrong. You don't feel it. I'm just talking about like you know, as a general. It's not you know. You know. For an everyday guy or girl that comes and sits in this car they wouldn't that know. don't know the difference between a Rolls Royce and a Volkswagen essentially it's as nice exactly but it's that step that Rolls Royce obviously takes so yeah. I personally I really do like the car I like the layout mm -hmm. I am a big fan of the infotainment system yeah. it's very intuitive it's very easy to use the Bluetooth I've never experienced a Bluetooth personally that was so easy to this hook is, up. this is actually a good point because I know that I'm struggling in my car to connect the Bluetooth to what do you call it to my phone mm -hmm. I would have to be stopped from connecting it for the first time this one was really quick like while I was driving I just searched for the phone and selected it yes and that's it connected Definitely. so going back to the infotainment system the infotainment system or the touch screen itself and then navigation it's very responsive very uh, sharp so it's an 8 inch it. touch display as well that's something I'd like to mention and it's very very high quality there is not any moment where I've been using it that I felt that it's missing something no, no, it's no, too no, no, no. big or it's too small it feels high definition yes high it's quality. just right it's perfect exactly. I couldn't want any more from and it. it has a sensor so it will detect when your arm is approaching it so it will pop up the you know the screens for you uh, other than that you have the center the big center console over here yes with all of the AC, the controls for the AC you have your ventilated and heated seats you have the AC controls down there and then you have your 
gear stick or gear lever, which yeah. is, it feels nice to rest your hand on it, and with the armrest, it's just, just nice to it's, I mean, we've both got our arms on it, and I've got a big yes. arm, and Ahmed's... We can share one. Bit. This, never this never happened. This never happened. Because we're always can. fighting for space, <laughs> and I always win. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you're just bigger than me. And uh, that's the way we like it. So, whilst we're in this car, we know that full well that we can actually put an extra five people in this car with room and with still room. have a large boot space, exactly. which is something important to mention. Not so, five, actually. You, five. One, two, three, You're four. Not five extra. If you put in this, oh, okay, five extra. Okay, yeah. so my mistake, I lost my count there. So back to what I was saying, it's got a 97.8 mm -hmm. square foot boot space, and that's with uh, the rear to the six and seven seat up. Yes. Well, that's quite impressive. It is. It is very impressive because if you see the trunk when you have all the three three rows, you know, upright, you still have, I would say, an average family car trunk. Oh no! Size. You have something. F w what with all the with seven all the seats? seats up. With all the seven yes, seats you have up. A, bigger than average. Yeah, bigger than uh, average. Uh, exactly. So the thing is, we'd also like to mention is that you can put the boot the all five seats behind us down. Yes. And this car, it's not the biggest in its range, but interior, it certainly feels like it. It feels, and this is another point when we're gonna talk about the uh, the right the right feel and the car itself from the exterior. It does feel. You know big but yes apart from that going back to the interior you have your driving selectors here the modes uh, for the driving select uh, snow uh, we don't have snow so <laughs> it's mainly off-roading there is snow <laughs> but uh, we're not going to be using it so now something I would like to point out now you've said that yes. the Terramont or the Atlas as it's known in the US Canada and Mexico um, I've never seen it being available in the UK or Europe, and I could be very wrong about this. So mm -hmm. I think that this is an Asian, perhaps African, uh, northern and southern Euro American car mm -hmm. available on the market. Because that's where these kinds of cars yes, are yes, needed. Yes. So chances when you're going to carry seven people aren't very often that you're going to... There, there was water. <laughs> I didn't want the car to get dirty. <laughs> okay. Um, Chances are you're going to be able to carry all of those people and they're going to be able to do it in comfort versus other cars where perhaps you won't be as comfortable. Exactly. Now, cars that you're used to carrying this amount of people in are a minivan. Now, I personally prefer SUVs, yes, 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 yes. and I know you do too. Uh, yeah. I find that they're more uh, utilitarian. You can do more with, a SUV with an than SUV than exactly, exactly. But it doesn't say that a minivan is bad. No. It's each his own and it depends on basically the need what do you yes. need the car for to you know carry more people or you know to go over let's say off-roading scenarios like yes. over i wouldn't say a speed which bump, this car I was gonna say a speed bump. is capable of doing it's got it's ice mode it's normal mode it's off-roading exactly. and it's um specialized where you can exactly. change the features to what suits you exactly best. and this is where i was talking about the drive select so right now uh, louis has put it into into mountain road i have no idea why he put it into mountain road we're in normal road condition you so. drove the car before me <laughs> no i took it from you well maybe anyway. i was off-roading <laughs> anyway so you have these drive select modes you have one other thing which is really handy in this car especially given the size of it okay it's a big car and when you sit inside it you can feel how big it is so you have the 360 cameras which are really handy. Yeah, they are very handy. So very, very handy. when you start to drive this car, you've got to get used to it. And that's what I'm saying. Yes. So you're not um, straight away used to this car. No. So it is a big car, if you get, if you get what I'm saying. So yes. you're not going to eventually go in and start to be able to drive this car easy peasy. It's not the easiest car to see where the lines are, to see where the It's an easy car to drive. It's very easy to drive. Yeah. It's However, just the, to get, uh, let's say, adapted to the car, yes. to get comfortable, comfortable with the car, this is where the uh, what do you call it the adaptation or adjust, uh, adjustment time required and this was very handy the 360 cameras especially getting into tight corners getting into tight parking spot which is also bringing me to the other subject the auto parking feature it has an auto parking feature where it w basically you can show the car where the park is and it will park for itself parking space 
This is a Middle Eastern thing. They call it a park. I don't get it. It's okay, okay, irritates okay. me to no end. Okay. Parking space. Sorry. Parking space. Anyway. So you have your 360 camera option. You have the uh, auto parking option. And then you have the automatic handbrake. That's all in the center console. Again, going to the driver's side. Obviously, you have a small, relatively small steering wheel. It's no, I, I have to say, it's... it's um, Good size for its car. It's, a good it's not size. a large unit. Yes. You don't feel like you're driving a truck. Yes. Uh, like a big, you know, truck to go. What's what are they called? Those uh, truck heavy goods vehicles. Yeah. You feel it's more of a sporty feel because yes. you have the. Uh, it's got a the flat lower bottom. Uh, exactly. So the, the uh, SEL model comes with a uh, as it's the highest range comes with a, le a leather covered steering wheel. And it does feel very nice. It's, it's all very, very nice. well put together. You've With got all of the buttons. Uh, everything you, know, you need on the uh, steering wheel. So you've got everything from being able to change the volume, set the, um, set the control, cruise control, exactly. um, take calls, go through the settings, change everything, songs. Everything, everything is on the Between the two big dials that you have over here, you have for the RPM and the speed of the car, you have that sensor digital uh, screen. That will show you all of this information, whatever you're talking through. So... This is your, let's say, view as a driver of the car. You have everything right there. More information if you want, you can have the uh, yeah. touch screen itself. So this model does come, newer models will come with the new digital display. Yes, yes. However, this model was, I think, the last one just before they the started rolling out. Exactly. So from what you'll see in the um, gauge display, I mean, it is very nice. It's very, it's very nice, clear. Yeah. It's full high definition, and you can never really get away from an analog uh, exactly. rev counter, counter and things. Exactly. So it's honestly good enough. If that's putting you off choosing between this one and the new one, so after a quick swap, magically swapping over, magically swapping over, we didn't pause the camera. We were talking about the digital display. Digital display itself. So we were rudely cut off. Exactly. <laughs> uh, by you, editing. Um, so yes, it's just basically this version that we currently have it isn't available with a digital display. Next yes. year's model will. Yes, exactly. Next year's model. It's and I'm hard. pretty sure you could probably retrofit one. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as I would need to retrofit no, one. No, you wouldn't need to. Yes. But if it was something at the end of the day that is life or death to you, you 100% could do it. Exactly. Um, speaking again of the interior of the car itself, yes. you have a lot of cup holders. Like I believe, <laughs> this is something that I find. What is the it's amount? Seventeen cup holders. So when <laughs> on earth? Okay, there are seven seats in this car, right? Yeah. yeah. Two cups per person is fourteen. There's still three extra three cup more. holders. For what? If you want, if one of them want two drinks. Okay. So if but one no, no, of that's still two drinks. <laughs> they still have two cup holders. Okay, See, what? So one of them wants thing. It's not five. a bad thing. See, it's not a bad thing to have no, 17 it's cup holders. All. It's really good. I mean, you will never run out of cup holders where you're going to fight <laughs> the next guy. You're going to keep, you know, your your cup or whatever it is. Yes. So another thing I'd like to mention that this car has like a lot of... slowly also. No, no, no. So we don't tip off the camera. It's 16. Anyway. So another thing I'd like to mention is the copious amount of USBs. There are four. Okay, four that you can connect your um, your phones to, or any such USB charging device. device. Yes. There's also Bluetooth mm -hmm. and SD card holders and readers. Mm. Now, there are two SD card readers and four SD card holders next to the where you put the CD and the SD card. So you have six at any given point in time. Now there is also one more thing. I don't know if. Uh, you have mentioned it or not, obviously we didn't because we're in the same car. Yeah. You have wireless LAN or basically wireless hotspot. So you can connect your phone or you connect any any device as the main source and the car itself will send that signal across the car mm -hmm. to have a wireless signal all over. So this, this car really is the ultimate family yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For long trips, for going on vacation, you have everything. You have SD cards, you have cup holders, you have luggage space, you have boot space, you have space to have more people. So literally, if you're 
traveling, I would take this across Europe. Oh, you could take this across Europe yeah. and have the whole family in the back. Exactly. Or even you go four people and you have the full back for yourself if you want to lay down or somebody wants to sleep. Now, continuing on with what we were saying <laughs> after magically shifting the camera again. Okay. So, in this car, you have Fender sound system. It's oh, one it of the is. best sound systems that I have, you know, listened to. Yes. In, in a lot of cars. This is probably one of the best. Um, so the only th sound system I can think that comes second to this is a Bose sound system that I heard in Maserati yeah. a few years ago. But this but one this is, is really above good. and beyond. Uh, uh, believe it or not, fun fact. When we took the car and I was driving it, I had the sound system on full blast. I ended up with a headache. He had a sound system on full blast, and I was inside my house. <laughs> and there's like three sets of walls between the outside and the car. I a huge him coming about a mile away. <laughs> I ended up with a headache, but that's not saying that you know the sound system is you know you're not supposed to bad. listen yeah, yeah, to the sound for you're volume. Not, exactly, you don't need to go to that extent yes. or to that extreme. And apart from the cup holders, apart from the uh, space, yeah, you also have nets. Yes. That you can store documents, you can store a lot of things. And a big, when I say big, it's a big it's yes. storage. Like, we can fit our camera equipment, we can fit our phones, we can fit the wallets, keys, wallet, and so much and more. And there's still more space. Um, the other thing that this car has got a lot of is <laughs> storage space, just full, just like cubby holes yes, here yes, 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 yes. for the phones at the front. The side door bins, the, the uh, glove, glove box, glove which is box. huge, and then you've got obviously space at the back for the back passengers, and obviously you've got the boot, which is huge. It's Volkswagen actually created some marketing ma uh, some marketing material, and, and we'll through the magic of editing, it shall be shown here. Now, now, honestly, you can really see from these sets of pictures how much you can really fit in this car. It's Honestly, it's one of the most spacious cars. It is the most spacious car I've ever been in. They call it a sport utility vehicle. It is what it is. It is, yes. It's but then, so looking back at the um, Alfa Romeo we tested a couple yes. of weeks ago, the Alfa Romeo was a fantastic car, and it is a different kind of animal than this is. Um, that you enjoy more because you like cars and you're driver. This, I would simply buy simply because I know that I can get my entire family and then some in the car and we can go on a long road trip. Um, I'm gonna be comfortable, they're gonna be super comfortable, whereas in the Alfa Romeo, you can't take everyone. The space behind me was for like the little person in the family. So, it's it, interior wise it's just, it's faultless exactly it's put together so no. well complete german <laughs> engineering everything feels solid everything's put together well i can't see anything unraveling or coming apart easily no. there are no rattles in the car it is this is really really it's, good it's but really this good. is the top of the range model exactly. it's got so so much stuff now going to the exterior of the car okay now, the car itself, it looks fantastic. You have your daytime running lights, you have the yes. Xenon headlights, you have the LED headlights. It comes with LED headlights as standard on yes. all of the models. Yes. Okay. But then you have the optional extras of the fog lights, you have the optional extra of the, you know, what do you call it, uh, other light pieces. I cannot remember them. So, the car itself, it looks fantastic. It looks big and it feels big and it is a big car given what yes what we have now, what we have said about the car. And it has twenty inch alloy wheels. Yes. Which is standard. Honestly as a conclusion. I don't think that we're at a conclusion yet to yes. be honest. Because I would like to say this car, as fantastic as it is, does have a couple of flaws. Hmm. Now, the ride of this car, it's smooth hmm. enough. You do feel the humps a bit more, you do feel a couple of bit things, but this is... which is surprising for an SUV. But Don't get me wrong, it's still super, yeah. super smooth. I'm just being really, really picky when I say this. Because this car is so good, I'm ho I'm now holding it to an even higher standard. I'm holding it to the standard now that I would hold a Range Rover. Because that's clearly what we're in. Yeah. We're in something that has surprised us so much that it's now... Exactly. It's, you know? It, uh, and that's the thing. If you compare it you know 
beyond comparison, beyond comparison, okay, I would go as a neutral, let's say, opinion. When I drove this car, I like the way it drives. And yes, I, I'm not expecting it to be, what do you call it, uh, Rolls Royce level of going over humps and not feeling it. It's in the end of, at the end of the day, it's a different league. It's yes. a different car. It's a different, everything is different. But for example, now we're coming up to a hump. That's quite stiff in terms of going up and down. But this You're is moving with this the car. is like any other normal car. This is like any other normal no, no, car. It is smoother than a normal car, truthfully. But because everything else about this car is just so good, I have to say that I was surprised by, you know, you wanted more dampening. Yes, I would like. I'd expect yeah. more dampening from a car of this size because it's so good at everything else. I mean, it's not got the most powerful engine, but it pulls. It's not the smoothest ride, but it's comfortable. The one big downplay of this car, and this is something, you know, in this day and age is quite important. It's quite heavy on petrol. Don't get me wrong, it's no Porsche Cayenne, it's no... Um, There's nothing wrong with the Porsche Cayenne. No, 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 in terms of amount of petrol, I have one. It uses a lot of petrol. But that was the old model. Yes, that we is have the old yet model. to see the new models and their fuel economy because a lot has changed yes. since I don't know, God knows when. So, but it does. In terms of all the cars that we've tested so far, from the Cayman to the um, Alfa Romeo and another car that we've got coming shortly, as you'll see. Um, this has used probably the most petrol in the shortest amount of time, with the least amount to be driven. But still, yes. compared to other cars, it's better, yes. okay? You can essentially make it more fuel economic as Volkswagen themselves, they have what they call it a blue meter. Blue motion. A blue motion. Ah, I call it blue meter because there is actually a meter that's blue. Okay, so you have the blue motion that encourages you to drive economically, encourages you to follow economical ways of saving gas and saving the environment. So it's not all, you know, petrol consumption. No, no, no. This is, I'm really holding this car up to another level because I like it so much. I truly do. This is a car that I'd honestly really consider purchasing. Yes, it might not have the badge prestige that others do, but this is... It, it can't be forgotten. This is a car that you have to consider. Exactly. You've got to drive one, you've got to get behind the wheel, and you've got to really see, see what these exactly. things are about. I mean, they come with some unusual features, like it comes with, in the digital display here, <laughs> what is it, like five clocks? Four. Four or five clocks? Four versions of the clock, and he likes one, and I like the other one. Yes. So we keep on swiping and changing between them. So It's a nice clock. <laughs> what can we say? So, this is the thing. It's, I would say it's one full package. If yeah. you're looking for specific things, you will never find a car that's gonna suit everyone. You will never find a car that's gonna be ev to everyone's liking. Yes. But majority of the people who would want an SUV, I think they should put this into consideration. Definitely. Because it's really good, it's, it's comfortable, it's luxurious, it looks nice, and it has a lot of features, a lot of functions, a lot of driving assistance. It has a lot of things yes. that we cannot fit simply in a what, 25, 30 minutes video. And trust us, we can make this at least two hours talking about the features oh, and yeah, every definitely. single little detail. I could spend about 30 minutes just <laughs> lovingly talking about exactly. the steering wheel. We it's cannot wonderful. fit everything and this is what you're getting. You're getting a lot of things in a, let's say, it's a big package, but yes. in the end, it's a comfortable big package. Yes. And, you know, I was going, I was saying about the petrol, you know, there are different modes. We have been in economy, believe it or not, <laughs> for most of them. Really, I haven't. I haven't noticed that we are in economy. Yeah, I put it in economy. Uh, 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 see, that's <laughs> as soon as I got the car, it's like this is heavy. Put economy. <laughs> so see that. That's the thing. You have all of these modes, and the car just transitions between them. Yeah. Effortlessly. Seamlessly. Seamlessly. Effortlessly. Yeah. All of these things, and this is gives you a, such a driving pleasure and experience that yes. you cannot find, you know, in other I would say cheaper yeah. brands. No. Okay, I wouldn't name ones, but in other cheaper brands you cannot find this. To finish off this Our review, final thoughts on the... What is our final short thoughts? thoughts? Yeah. Honestly, my final thoughts, I like the car. Mm -hmm. I like the way it drives. 
Okay, and it's comfortable enough mm -hmm. compared to other cars that I drove, even at the same price range or lower price range. Yes, it has its drawbacks when it comes to you know, dampening the what do you call it, the shocks, dampening the ride. Yes. But it's a still a smooth ride. Seats are comfortable. The car looks gorgeous. The yes, from the outside, from the inside, you don't feel anything that's missing. With so these minor, I'm, I'm loving it. With these minor issues that it has. I'm really saying that these are absolutely minor. We've perhaps made it seem worse than it is simply because we can't find any problems with it. Um, and I would like to find a problem with it because at this rate, we're going to end up buying them. <laughs> Half of the cars we've been in, we're going to end up buying. But honestly, I've enjoyed my time with this car. Um, and for that, I'd have to thank Bahbahani as usual, yes, Volkswagen Bahrain and Nariman, the marketing manager of yes. Volkswagen Bahrain. We had a wonderful walkthrough tour with one of the sales guys, so Ali. I have to say, Mr. Ali, if you are looking to purchase a Volkswagen, specifically if you're looking to purchase speak this one, speak to Ali. Speak to Ali, and we can't recommend this car enough because it's, it's good. rival is the Nissan Patrol yeah. in my eyes, exactly. and the Nissan Patrol is priced quite high, and you're getting a better deal with this in my eyes exactly so if you want to go you know to test drive it to see how it yep. is just go to Bahbahari Bahrain Volkswagen dealership ask them for the tire mount and just take it for a spin see how mm. you feel about it yes and enjoy it yes and or your own local Volkswagen dealership wherever you exactly need. exactly and leave a comment down below if you disagree or you have any other features you want us to showcase in future reviews yes. of cars of this size and we can't for you to wait for you to subscribe comment like and turn on the notification bell until next time just try it